Have you ever wondered why some businesses choose to stay small? Maybe it's something to do with the satisfaction that comes from creating something with your own two hands, from creating something special, unique even. That's exactly what a handful of people here in McLaren Vale, South Australia are doing. They create things on a small scale so that they can work closely with what they produce. Think about having a handmade pair of shoes or a handmade piece of jewellery. It's something that's artisan, it's unique, it's small and it's personal and you're getting the story. Um, look, they're not doing this for the money, they're doing it for the love. If they were doing it for the money, they'd be working for a, you know, a big corporation and they wouldn't be hands on. But to make wine like this, you have to have your hands dirty, you have to be involved in every aspect of it. So yes, I think that there's a lot of passion going on there and I think they're offering something completely different. And what do you particularly like about producing wine and growing grapes on a smaller scale? Well, there's not many people can sort of look at their job and see the whole the whole uh, process before the rise, yeah. 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 Maybe the baker, yeah. yeah. Or the butcher, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Or artists, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Painters. That's right, yeah. So, Steve, you've worked in the, the corporate world mm -hmm. of wine production, and mm -hmm. now you've come back to work on a smaller scale. What are, the, what are the major benefits for you? What do you love about working on a smaller scale? Um, I think the main one is this. Dirty hands. Dirty hands. <laughs> dirty hands. Yeah. When I you didn't get dirty hands. No, well, bottle. I mean you don't because I mean, well, as I said to you, I'm looking after 280 million bottles of red wine. You're guiding or you're helping people, and yes, mm. as a winemaker, you're having influence, but you're not. I love to pump and I love to to get in and you know, I like cooking. Mm. I, I, I mm. can't do that. So, yes, as you get further and further up the corporate ladder, you move further and further away from dirty hands and the actual learning of winemaking and I don't think you ever stop that process it's not something where you get to this point and say that's it I know it's an ongoing thing that you yeah. keep developing so it's a yeah. skill that you keep learning and learning and learning. When you're doing you know, 60 80 barrels that's your, that's your whole produce you can know them all intimately and mm. know them each one of them where, where they're at in their development um, harder to do when you've got you know, 80,000 barrels. Most winemakers these days sit behind a desk and punch out work op notes for, for cellar hands, you know, mm. and, that, and there has been a, a serious disconnect between winemaker and vineyard. I mean, we've, well, that's generally because our, our, our industry is so dominated by, by large companies where mm. it's physically impossible to have winemakers working in the field. They do a couple of token visits and that's it. Whereas at this very small little stage here, you know, we, we, we follow every part through and mm. I would say 85% of the work that I do would be in the vineyard making most of my winemaking decisions there. In this sense, small is actually a good thing for you Absolutely. in this process. It's, yeah. it's a positive thing, not a negative thing. We, we feel it's a very positive thing, and that's what makes us different. Well, and I think just uh, you know, from an artisan perspective, I mean, uh, Carol is roasting our coffee, and essentially it's, it's temperature and time, and, and then visually uh, mm -hmm. as she goes through uh, a, a roast. And where you know, the big companies, they use big machines with a computer and they just push the button and uh, that's how they roast coffee, mm -hmm. where Carol is truly an artisan in that she is sitting there watching temperature, yes. watching uh, uh, time and, and then looking at the color of the beans yeah. as we go through the, you know, anywhere between uh, 12 and, you know, 20 minutes mm -hmm. of, of roasting time. It's all about the coffee, you know, mm -hmm. it's not about how much money can I make and how many places can I, you know, get my coffee into. It's more about, this is a very special product and, you know, it's very important to us that, you know, it's enjoyed and brewed properly and uh, so I think there is a growing movement and um, we feel very much, uh, we're very much excited to be part of that. So. Drew, if someone were to come in here tomorrow and offer you a large amount of money to go off and make wine for a multinational producer, how long would you have to think about that? Uh, not very long. Um, I've discovered that um, what I love about what I do is, is being involved in it and um, working with the grapes, working with the wine, discovering the difference that, it, that are there and you, you would lose that if you went off to somewhere big. Mm -hmm. The differences in wine start with the soil and the land and um, there aren't 200 acre lots of soil that are the same, like mm -hmm. it's, 
anything special about the flavor, about that patch of lamb will only be a small block. So you're gonna, you're gonna start with small. And if you try to scale up the production, you're inevitably gonna have to blend a whole lot of blocks. Mm -hmm. And then you, immediately you've lost the uniqueness of whatever it is about each of the sites. You have to have a point of difference. You really do, otherwise why would they even bother? You know, my neighbour, John Brinney, um, you know, he, th he thinks that we make fairly similar, you know, we've got that distinct blue at springs taste. Yeah, yeah. So ideally for you, when you drink a glass of wine, you should be able to taste the place that it's come oh, from. Oh, and, and the people too. I'm, I'm interested in where did it come from and who, and who made it? Okay. Yeah, how did they make it? And yeah. that connection, do you think that's easier to make for a small producer? That it's easier to get that sense of who made the wine and where it came from? Yeah, I think you got their fingerprints on it, yeah. And you've oh. got the sense of place of the land, yeah. yeah. I suppose most people would have the perception that being small um, entails restrictions, if you like. Yeah, that, that's interesting. Limitations. Yeah, uh, I see it the exact opposite. I, um, I was blending our 2008s yesterday and rather than just having three varieties from which we choose, Shiraz, Grenache and Cabernet, um, we look at two or three different wines from those. I guess I had an option of 10 or 11 different wines because on the tasting bench they look so exciting. I suppose if I was working for um, uh, Winemaker Incorporated, it would be, here's your <laughs> instruction, this is what you have to do mm. and we'll pay you every Thursday for doing it. I've uh, a made wine for people around here, friends of mine and neighbours, along the same sort of belt of soil. And, uh, the results that come back from the larger companies that they're selling their fruit to, not the same. Mm. You know, they just don't get the same attention, I guess, and they can't afford to in, in what they're doing. It's not what they're trying to do. Mm. Whereas when we, you know, spend that little bit of extra time and give it a little bit of extra care, you know, the results are fantastic. In a perfect world, at the end of it all, you get to see a reflection of the climate, of the care, uh, of the soil, reflected in the, in the, in the finished product. Mm -hmm. yeah. The last couple of vintages we've had excessively hot summers, right. which uh, has made the process of making good quality wine mm -hmm. more, difficult. more difficult. But we're always up for a challenge. You can tell it's from the same vineyard, but you, mm. there's different, different variances, mm -hmm. which I think is exciting. I think that's... Mm. Uh, that it's not the same wine each year, it's mm. a different wine, you can talk and you can really see the, um, you know, the ups and downs of certain vintages. Mm. Mm. So you like getting up in the morning and doing what you do, this is work that you oh, love? Yeah. 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 yeah, just jump out of bed every morning, it's great. Mm -hmm. so, it's a passion for you? Oh yeah, you know, it has to be love. It has to be. Because there's no money in it. Uh -huh. And what, what do you love about it? What? Oh, just all of it, you know, when people say, oh, how can you prune for 14 weeks, you know, I go, love to. I'm out there every day, I'm, I'm antsy when I'm in a meeting. Uh -huh. I'd rather be in the vineyard. Right. Do you see making wine as a kid in any way to making art? Uh, I gave up art when I was 11, when a kid in school was better than me. <laughs> <laughs> and I've had a guitar, brand new with an amplifier that I've never picked up and played, as my post-divorce sort of treat to myself. So it's the most achievable art for me. Right. <laughs> Presumably it is inextricably bound up with family from you, for you, from the sounds of it? It is. I think it's also uh, something that we work together in our partnership with my husband and I because he's a, an artist, a painter, and so we, we approach our work in a very similar way because this is my art and this is my form of expression. So while he's painting huge canvases with thick oil paint. I'm working with the dynamics of what's changing for me every year and trying to recreate something that I'm really proud of as an idea of what that vintage held for me. I mean when you think about some of the people that we have even in the, in the Vale crew, we've got people that have been first class on Qantas, we have people that have won awards all around the world and nobody really knows who they are but once they discover them um, they realise you know there's passion in every bottle. That's great. Passion in every bottle. There is. You can taste that passion, do you think? Absolutely. Look, wine is a journey. It's not a destination. You don't have to get anywhere. It's just the whole um, road that you're travelling along and these, that's what these people are doing. Even though I'm working harder than I've ever worked in my whole life, I feel that it's good, honest, important work 
and it's a way of me connecting with the world, showing them my ideas and being extremely creative in the process. In fine art or lovingly produced crafts, we find something which arouses our senses, captures the imagination. For the producers in the Vale crew, it's not about mass production for maximum profits. They're driven by their need to create something special and unique. As Teddy Roosevelt put it, far and away the best prize that life has to offer is the chance to work hard at work worth doing. <laughs>